Welcome back, everyone. We are on the ground at the Data Artisans user conference for Flink. Uh, it's called Flink Forward. We're at the Kabuki Hotel in Lower Pacific Heights in San Francisco. Um, the conference kicked off this morning with some great talks by uh, Uber and Netflix. And we have uh, the privilege of having with us uh, Chinmay Soman yep. from Uber. <laughs> yes. And thank, thank uh, you for me. welcome, Chinmay. Thank Good you. to have you. So, um, you gave a really, really interesting presentation um, about the sort of pipelines that you're building and where, Spark, uh, where, where Flink fits. Mm -hmm. um, but you've also, you've also said there's a large deployment of Spark. Mm -hmm. Help us understand um, how Flink became a mainstream technology for you, right. where it fits and why you chose it. Sure. So about one year, about a year back, when we were starting to evaluate what technology makes sense for the problem space that we are trying to solve, which is the near real-time analytics, uh, we observed that Spark is actually, the Spark stream processing is actually more resource intensive than, than uh, some of the other technologies we, we benchmark. So more specifically, it was using more memory and CPU at that time. Uh, so we, that's one. And, and I actually come from the Apache Samza world. So, uh, it wasn't the, link, the same LinkedIn team before before I came to Uber. Oh, okay. So I have we had in-house expertise around Samza, and I think the reliability was uh, the the key motivation for choosing Samza. So, so we started building on top of Apache Samza for almost well, uh, the last one and a half years. But then we hit we hit a scale where, where Samza we felt was lacking. Um, so with Samza, it, it's actually tied into Kafka a lot, right? and then you need to make sure your Kafka scales um, in order for the for the stream processing to scale. In other words, the the um, the topics, yes. I guess, and the partitions mm -hmm. of those topics, you have to keep the physical layout of those in mind at the yes. at the message queue level, yes. um, in line with the um, with the stream processing. That's right. Yeah, the parallelism in Samza is actually tied into a number of partitions in Kafka, and furthermore, if you have a multi-stage pipeline where one stage processes data and sends output to another stage. Uh, all these intermediate stage, stages today is, again goes back to Kafka. So if you want to do a lot of these use cases, you actually end up creating a lot of Kafka topics, right? And the I.O. overhead on your cluster shoots up exponentially. Oh, and so it, when creating, creating topics um, or creating consumers that do something and then output to producers, if you do too many of those things, you defeat the purpose of low latency yeah, because you're storing right. everything. Yeah. So it, 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 the trade-off is it is more robust because if you suddenly get a spike in your traffic, yeah. your systems is going to handle it because Kafka buffers that spike. Right? Right. So it gives you a very reliable platform, but it's not cheap. Right? So that's why we are looking at Flink uh, because in Flink, you can actually build a multi-stage pipeline and have in-memory queues instead of writing back to Kafka. So it is fast. And it, it, it gives you, you don't have to create multiple topics for a per pipeline. So, all right, let me unpack that just a sure, little bit sure. to be clear. Um, the in-memory queues give you, obviously, better I.O. Yes. And, I, and if I understand correctly, that can absorb some of the back pressure? Yeah, so back pressure is interesting, right? Uh, with, if you have everything in Kafka and no in-memory queues, there is no back pressure. Because Kafka is it a just, big buffer. Right? Yeah. It just keeps going. With in-memory queues, there is back pressure. And now the question is, how do you handle this? Right. So going back to um, some systems, they actually degrade and can't recover once they are in back pressure. But Flink, as you have seen, uh, it's, it slows down consuming from Kafka. But once the spike is over, once you're over that hill, it actually recovers quickly. OK. Right. So, so it is able to sustain uh, heavy spikes. Right? OK, so this, is, so this goes to your issues with keeping up with the growth of data. That's right. That you know, the system, there's multiple levels of elasticity. Yes. And then 
resource intensity. Uh -huh. Tell us about that and, and right. the, the desire to get as many jobs as possible yeah. out of a certain <laughs> level of resource. Right, so today uh, we are a platform where people come in and say, here's my code, or here's my SQL that I want to run on your platform. And they, in the old days, they were telling us, oh, I need 10 gigabytes per container, and I need these many CPUs. Um, and, and that really limited how many use cases we onboarded and made our hardware footprint pretty expensive. Right. Right. So we need the pipeline, the infrastructure, to be really memory efficient. Because what we have seen is memory is the bottleneck in our world, more so than CPU. Uh, because a lot of applications, they consume from Kafka, they actually buffer locally in each container. And then they do that in the local memory, in the JVM memory. So we need the memory component to be very efficient. Right? Uh, and that, that gives us, you know, you can pack more jobs on the same cluster if everyone is using lesser memory. Um, okay. So that, that's one motivation. The other thing that, for example, uh, Flink does and Samza also does is make use of uh, a RocksDB store, which is a local persistent Oh, that's cache, where it right? gets the state that's management. Right. That's right. So you can offload from memory onto the disk. Um, into a proper database. Into a proper database. And, and uh, you don't have to cross the network to do that because it's sitting locally. But that's uh, just to elaborate on what might be a kind of a techie, what might seem like an uh, arcane topic, if it's residing locally, mm -hmm. then um, anything it, right. it's going to join with has to also be that's right. residing lo yeah. locally. That's a, that's a good point. You have to be able to partition your inputs and your state in the same, in the same way. Otherwise, there's no locality. Okay, right? and so, you'd have to shuffle stuff yeah. around the network. And more than that, you need to be able to recover if something happens. Because there's no replication to this state, right? So if a node, if the hard disk on that yarn node crashes, you need to recreate that cache oh. from somewhere. So okay. either you go back and read from Kafka, or you store that that cache somewhere. Uh, so Flink actually supports this out of the box, and it snapshots the RocksDB state into Got it. HDFS. Got it. Okay. So, so that's actually more resilient. Easy. Yes. And more space uh, resource efficient. That's right. All right. So let me ask one last question. Mainstream enterprises, mm -hmm. they, or at least the very largest yes. ones, have been trying to wrestle, you know, their arms around some open source <laughs> projects. Uh, yes. You know, very innovative. The, the, the pace of innovation is huge. Um, but it demands the skill sets that seem to be most resident in large yeah. consumer internet companies. That's right. What advice do you have for them where they aspire to use the same technologies that you're talking about to yes. achieve, you know, build new era systems, yeah. but they might not have the skills? Right. So that's, that's a very good question. I'll try to answer uh, in the way I can. Um, I think the first thing to do is understand your scale, right? Even if you're a big, large banking corporation, you need to understand where do you fit in, in, your, in, in the industry ecosystem. Yeah. If it turns out you know, it, it, the, the scale isn't that big and you're using it for internal analytics, then, then you can just pick the off-the-shelf uh, pipelines uh, and, and make it work. So for example, if you don't care about multi-tenancy, right, if, if your hardware spend is not that much, actually anything might actually work. Right? The, the real challenge is when you pick a technology and make it work for a large set of use cases and you want to optimize for cost. And that, that's where you need a huge engineering organization. Right? So it's in simpler words, uh, if, if, if your use cases extend is not that big, uh, pick something which has a lot of support from the community. Right? And then it, most more common things just work out of the box and that's good enough. But if you do need, if you're doing a lot of complicated things like machine, real time machine learning, or if your scale is in you know, billions of messages per day or terabytes of data per day, then you really need to make a choice whether you invest in an engineering organization that can really you know, understand these use cases or you go to companies like you know, Databricks, get a support from, from Databricks. Or, uh, or maybe a, a cloud vendor. Or, or a cloud vendor. Or, or things like Confluent, which is giving you know, Kafka support and, and, and things okay. like that. So, it's, I don't think there's one answer. Uh, if, to me, our use case, for example, the, way, the reason we chose uh, to build an engineering 
organization around it because our use cases were immensely complicated uh, and not really seen before. Right. So we had to invest in, 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 in this technology. So. All right, Chinmay, we're going to leave it on that and hopefully keep the dialogue going sure. offline. So uh, we'll be back shortly. We're at uh, Flink Forward, uh, the Data Artisans User Conference for Flink. We're on the ground at um, the Kabuki Hotel in downtown San Francisco, and we'll be right back.